Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today I thought I'd do a Will I Buy It? I haven't done one in a long time. I have been buying a lot of things, but I did see some things coming out that I was on the fence about, and people are starting to do videos on them, and I, I just wanted to, you know, tell my side of the story. <laughs> so let's get into it. I'm going to try to do this without my glasses, but I don't know how successful I will be. Huda Beauty is coming out with something called Glow Obsessions. It's a quad with a highlight, a low light, a blush, and I'm guessing a bronze. It didn't say on Trend Mood what the fourth color was, but that would make sense. There are a couple of colorways on this, but I, I have to say I'm not into face palettes. I like a bright blush, for instance, but I don't like a dark bronzer, and I find if I go to the one where I'm attracted to the blush, the bronzer is way, way too dark for me. And I also feel like, for me personally, it leaves less creativity. Like, I want to put on the bronzer that I want to put on and the blush I want to put on. I don't want someone else to tell me, if this is the right bronzer for you, this is the right blush for you, because inevitably it's a blush color that I'm not interested in. So me and face palettes, eh, and this one, eh, I'm just, I don't know. Huda hasn't really done it for me in a while. So that's a pass. ColourPop is coming out with some super shock colors for the summer. And I am attracted to these three colors. The, like the purple, dark purple, I don't know what it is. Violet, really. A dark violet. Um, maybe it's a magenta. Who knows? There's a difference. The blue and the yellow. No, the lime green. I am totally into these. These are calling my name. And they're like five or eight or ten bucks each. So, I, you know, it's not like something that you're going to wear to work. It's not something for every day. But it's a way to have some fun um, without spending too much money. And you know what, you guys? I think I'm into it. I think I'm going to get those. So, yes. <sighs> Kristen Cavalieri is coming out with a skincare line. And it's called Uncommon Beauty. Okay, I saw a lot of comments saying Uncommon like Rare. And people are saying this is a cash grab. I'm here to confirm it is indeed a cash grab. In fact, if she just called it cash grab, I'd have more respect for her. <laughs> and I might even buy it just to support. But I, the, her TV show, her reality show that she most recently did was all about Uncommon James, the jewelry line. She did not design any of this jewelry, you guys. She bought it from China. These were pre-made and she made orders and then she's put them under her banner and sold them off of her name. She even had an episode where she came to realize that people who were buying the jewelry were people who watched the original show, The Hills or Laguna Hills or one of those things. You know, it's about stardom. It's about selling your fame. They were dedicated to her and so they were buying her junky jewelry. And at one point, because I did watch that show a couple of times, her husband had said, we can't do this anymore. This is taking too much of your time. You have to sell it, which apparently was the plan. Cash grab. And now she's doing a cash grab here. Making it even worse, some of the things that she has is a foamy cleanser. Foamy cleansers are stripping. And she has a water gel moisturizer. Water gel moisturizers have alcohol in them. She did not know anything about skincare. It's obvious. And... Absolutely not. And by the way, I don't even recognize her. This picture appears to be altered a great deal because this is not the girl that looked like the girl in the most recent reality show. Hmm. On the other hand, Lisa Eldridge, a woman who is a woman's woman. She wants women to look beautiful. I think she really really wants to spread what she knows to everybody so everyone can look their best. I 100% believe that. I just respect her. Can't even measure it. She's coming out with a couple of new products and I think there's something else as well because in one of her most recent videos, she, oh, she was doing the pastel eye video, which you must see, she said, oh, the blush is from my palette. And just the way she said it, I didn't feel like it was her working palette. I felt like it was her palette. Like, I think she might be coming out with a blush palette. But she is, we know, coming out with a liquid blush. 
in a squeezy tube and she's coming up with a highlighter. Now, when I first started watching YouTubes, it was Lisa that brought me here. I was trying to figure out how to do a nude lip and I just, every color I bought made me look like I was dead. I did a search and it brought me to a video she did and I binged. I spent the entire weekend watching her videos and I, she is my entree into the world of YouTube. In her videos from that period of time, which is probably five years ago, she would oftentimes use Becca Pearl as a highlighter. And she also had mentioned a story when she became creative director for Lancome, I think the second time, because I think she's had two stints. She told them they had to bring back some liquid highlighter that they had because it was so lovely. And I'd seen her use it a couple of times, but generally she didn't because it was no longer being made and they did bring it back but they didn't bring it back to the United States I think it was in Canada and I think it was in Europe anyway when it comes to highlighters I 100% trust her absolutely and blush yes of course I'm going to be buying this and you can bet I'll be getting a couple of the blush colors I'm very delighted that we are having a bunch of blushes coming out right now I, I love the colors of the Hermes that I got I love the Surratt's that I got I I don't mind getting more blush. I only have, you know, one pair of cheeks, so it's problematic in that way only. I even like the hourglass colors, the Revel and um, Loyal. I love those colors. So I'm all over this. I'm all over blush. I'm all over Lisa. Yes, 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 yes. And by the way, we don't know when Lisa's is coming out, or I didn't write it down. I think it's in the next, um, I would guess the next month. June 9th, Louboutin Beauty is going into face palettes and eyeshadow palettes. And check out the packaging. It's crazy. You know this is going to be very expensive because this packaging is kind of nuts. It's, um, you know, kind of them. And other people have done studs naturally. Red is what Louboutin is made for. I personally don't own Louboutins because I find them to be narrow and, honestly, they don't have much of a range. It seems to me they're always five to six inch stilettos, and I just cannot. I like a heel as much as the next girl, but 3.5 seems to be my comfort zone, and after that, it's torture. So I don't own any of them. But, um, you know, initially it's like, no. But then I look, and I think, you know, one of these eyeshadow palettes looks like something I have. In fact, it looks like the Kevin Aquan. So you kind of have to disengage from what you're looking at and just look at the colors. Do I have this? Do I have this? And there's one palette not only do I not have, I may be interested in, but I have to see pictures closer ups and on people to see, we'll see what their advertising campaign is. But this is interesting to me. Maybe. And you know what? The cheap palette, maybe too. And maybe just because uh, you guys might might like it. because. Honestly, that's what I'm here to do, to show you things that you might like and to get views. I mean, let me be so bold as to say it. And this week, I didn't get too many views, so um, maybe that'll help. Maybe it won't. It, you never know what's going to get views. Like, when I do Charlotte Tilbury, nobody watches. And when I do a Pat McGrath, nobody watches. So people don't want to see my interpretation of those brands so I kind of feel like okay you know I, I won't buy those brands <laughs> it's fine with me Louboutin I'm not sure you guys are up there for it but I might be uh, Danessa Myricks is coming out with six new color fix foils and when I saw this picture I was immediately reminded of Cher from the Sunny and Cher show in this period of time I think it was the 70s yeah mid 70s uh, she wore either a purple eye, this is what I remember, a purple eye or a turquoise eye. And I remember I had, they were either potted colors or crayon colors from the drugstore in those colors trying to get that share look. So there's something to me very nostalgic about two of the colors in this group. And I might go there. And, you know, because I look exactly like Cher, and we have totally the same eyelids. But it's, there's something just that's nostalgic to me from the 70s, these particular colors. Maybe. Let me know what you think. Do you want to see me try those or not? 
KVD is coming out with liquid gel blushes. They're $26. It's called ModCon. What is that? Like Comic Con? Do better. The colors look good. They do. But I, I would rather hold my money for Lisa. I want to see what Lisa's doing before I go into KVD. So chances are probably not. Bite is coming out with some blushes too, and this packaging is adorable. The colors are weird. It, to me, these look like, one of them, which is called watermelon, actually looks like blueberries that you put in a blender with cream. It looks blue. And the other one also looks blue, but not as much cream. And then the two other colors look kind of a little on the bronzery side. I don't understand why there's two blue shades and one of them they're calling pink and it's clearly blue. I'm so confused. Uh, it's $32. I would say that, and, and by the way, they're calling it Daycation Whipped Cream. So I get it because it looks like there's whipped cream in these berries. I, I would need to see some more information on this, like, you know, swatches on cheeks and stuff because they don't look pink to me. They're, they're odd. And if you're going to go for four colors, wouldn't you have more of a range? Because it really just looks like two colorways with slight differences in them. So probably not, but the packaging is super, super cute. And I really hope it smells like blueberries and cream. Fenty Bright Fix. So they're saying this is natural, no makeup effect, that it's sheer, but buildable. And it's in 16 shades, it's $25, and it brightens and conceals and corrects. Here's the thing, it, it, they're saying it's thin and it's not gonna crease and all this kind of stuff. If it's buildable, that means you're putting on more product, which means it's going to crease. I don't know, you guys, I don't think so. I just, I just would be hard pressed to think that this has been nailed out of the park. I would say that this brand in particular skews young. I mean, let's face it, all brands skew young, right? But she's apparently very involved in the products, so she doesn't know what it's like to have lines and crepiness and puffiness and darkness under her eyes. So I, I would be hard pressed to think that this would be suitable for me. Let me know if you want me to try it, take one for the team, and I will. So Charlotte Tilbury Instant Look of Love Palettes, one is called Glowing Beauties, one is called Pretty Blushes, is that what it's called? Pretty Blushed? Anyway, I'm starting to see people do this now. A couple of things. The advertising is beautiful, these beautiful flowers in the background and pinks and girly, 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 and I'm all for the girl, the girly stuff. But I do find that she has shimmers in her blushes, shimmers in her eyeshadows. Her, her aesthetic isn't quite aligned to mine. But I do want to, you know, give her a high five. I've noticed on Instagram she is one of the only makeup brands I follow that is starting to include women who are over 40. And I am so grateful for that. So yay for that, for starting to include those women of ages outside of 20, <laughs> but uh, not so much. And that's partly the reason I wanted to do this video. It's not that I don't know it's out there, it's just that I just don't think it's for me. And, you know, no. Anastasia on May 3rd, so it's already come out. Another face palette situation. This is bronzer, highlight, and blush. These three palettes in light, medium, and dark. And no, I would fall between the light and medium and neither of them look interesting. And the same thing, I just don't really like the idea of somebody telling me what to do. That's what I think of face palettes. They're telling me what to do. So I'm not interested. Uh, the Chantecaille, the flower powder, perfect blur powder. And the Cheek Shade, I think it's just called Cheek Shade. First of all, the packaging is so cute. And I pondered this, you guys, I pondered it. Now this powder apparently tons of people like, but recently my experience with powder has been, I need to wear powder that is translucent. 
which I didn't powder today. So let me put on some powder while I'm talking to you. I need a powder that is translucent. I think it's best for me because you can see the color difference. I am convinced. And the people who love this that I have seen, they put it all over their face. And if you're new here, I do not put powder all over my face. I don't want to shine right here, and I don't want to shine too much right here. And then I just smooth out the edges so there's a nice transition, and it's not like, ooh, matte right here, and then not. Not that I'm super matte, but the point is, this is where I will do powder, and I might do some under my eyes, which I didn't today, but I don't put powder all over my face. And my impression is that this is the kind of powder you just put all over your face and you use a big brush and you get a little aggressive with it. So it's not a setting powder, it's a finishing powder. And I'm just not a finishing powder gal. And I do have issues with baked gelées. So I thought, you know what, I'm not going to do this. It's three strikes, color, baked gelée, and all over the face. So that's a no for me. And the blush, it's just one color. And I don't know, it, it doesn't look terribly unique. It could be insanely beautiful on the skin. I would like to see it in person. And if I do and I like it, then I will buy it. But I just feel like, you know, I have a lot of blushes. Is this different than anything I have? I don't know. So maybe on the blush. There's a lot more that I'm not mentioning, you guys. But finally, ColourPop has another product. They're called Color Sticks, and there's one in yellow. And I have a thing for yellow, and I have a disappointment in most yellow powders, so I thought maybe I'll get a yellow stick and just, you know, do something inexpensive, do something playful. It's just like, you know, fast fashion. There might be something that's very trendy, but you know it's going to last two seasons well, not two seasons, two years. So let's say it's a summer top. A couple of years ago, there was a very lag and look kind of thing going on where it was asymmetric, but it was a traditional fabric, like a, a men's uh, blue and white stripe. And it was everywhere. So you could have gone on Farfetch and spent 600 bucks for one, or you could have gone to Zara and spent $60 for one. To me, very colorful, playful makeup is like fast fashion. Don't spend a lot on that stuff because it's not part of the foundation of your makeup routine or your makeup collection. Those are the extras that are fun and maybe it's best to spend less money on them. And you guys, that's pretty much it. Will I buy it? Not a lot. That is interesting to me. But I did just buy a bunch of stuff that I'm enjoying and uh, you know let's see let's see what else comes up who knows I could go to my computer tomorrow and boom something I have to have but right now I've just not seen anything that I have to have let me know if there is something that you want me to get and you want me to review and I will thank you so much for spending some time with me I hope it was helpful I hope it was fun and I hope you come back again until we meet again, be safe, be smart, and I am wishing you good health.